The sun is teasing her. Ah, yeah, it's nice. You like it? So what? No, no. Was it usual? Was it usual for a married couple with a child to be in the ashram, and were you or were you spe um, considered a special case? Was it usual for a married couple and a child to be in an ashram here? No, but we married long before we joined the ashram, and we had the child before we joined the ashram. But we were the first family that mother put together. Um, for each of you, what do you consider your spiritual work and how was mother guiding you? What is your spiritual work, each of you, and how was mother guiding you? <laughs> well, let me answer. There's no such thing as spiritual work. It is work. Mother gives you work, you do the work. It's your attitude that is spiritual. The work is not spiritual. You give the work as, a, as, a, as an offering to the Divine and you do it with great joy. That is the way of doing the work. But the work itself is not spiritual, it's ordinary work. Whatever work you are doing, you do it with the attitude of an offering. And that Mother had said that work done in the right attitude is the body's prayer. That is the yoga. That's the yoga, perhaps. And how, how but, was Mother guiding you in, uh, in your spiritual uh, quest? How, individually? Who knows? That's a thing I don't know anyway. Well, Mother didn't guide physically. She guided from, from, from within. She, guided she gave you the force, she arranged the circumstances, she did everything, and the work became easy. That's where Mother's way of working. She won't tell you what to do. She'd tell you, go and do it, and she would make all the arrangements so you would be able to do it very easily. Mm. No, she guided us too, physically, I would say. When we she were students, she helped us. She helped us in art, encouraged yes. us in everything, artistic, beautiful. If you are interested in gardening, in painting, whatever we liked, she used to encourage us a lot and take time and as though we were very important, we were very special, help us in every way. When I became a teacher, she told me how to teach children drawing. No, she took a lot of time to help us physically Especially also. Especially for the very young ones, Gauri, not so much for us, no? No, for Golkon she didn't help you. She must have helped you. Of course she helped me, but that was something hidden. It wasn't outward show. No, but we, at least I feel it outward also. She helped us a lot. Was it, um, was she behaving the same way with everybody? No. Never. Can, can Everyone you was an individual. Sorry, when I ask again, can you just uh, start with a sentence? sentence. Hmm? Say, so start it with a sentence. Don't oh, start oh, no more. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> okay, start again. What, was, was she behaving with um, everybody the same way? No. Everyone was an individual. We had a uh, we had a very special relationship and nobody knew somebody else's. Each one had their own relationship with the mother, which was very intimate, very special. And um, mother took a lot of care for, I would say, each individual and each detail also. I, at least I felt it like Everything good which we have learnt, everything beautiful, she encouraged us so much. So what she said to one person wasn't, and maybe you, you would have time, had time to think about it, but I ask, we have to wait. So was mother the same with everybody, and what she said to one person, was it uh, Every a rule? Mother said there's no such thing as a rule. Every occasion has its own rule, has its own truth. Every person, and what she says to one person may be quite different to what she says to somebody else because she saw what is the truth. When you go by rules, you don't see the truth. The mother had no rules. And she would tell you one thing today and something else tomorrow. So there was no, there was no thing called consistency. Mother was not consistent. She, she, at every moment she spoke what she saw. And what, what was she telling you, Mona? Mona, what, what, what was mother telling you? Nothing. She never told me anything. 
She never told you anything, of course. Well, what did she tell me? <laughs> she told me she was very satisfied with the way Golconda was being run. <laughs> but it's personal, that's personal. It had nothing to do with mother, is it? So, you know, I used to go to work and she was working there and that's all. So you were talking together while you were working or how was it? No, she'd work in her place and I'd work in another. In the same house, yes, but not together, never. Her work was quite different to mine. Mine was just cleaning, dusting. Hers wasn't. So what, what was her work? No idea. Which? I don't know what her work was. Karen, what do you think mother's work was? Why well, she met people, she helped people, she wrote, she wrote articles, she answered letters. Looked after three or three. Yes, years. looked after so many things. So organized. What? Nobody organized like she did. The whole ashram was organized right to the detail by her. To the last detail, everybody would come with their problems, she would solve the problems, help them in their own personal yoga and in their department's work. She was so working. can you, each of you, can you tell me maybe a, a common or an individual memory of uh, um, you have with mother and showing what kind of uh, woman and person she was? A very sweet memory you have. Oh, well, I can tell you one. My mother died in the middle of the war and I was completely finished because I was young then and I didn't want to go anywhere but Uda made me go to mother. So I went to her and um, she did something because when I left her I didn't feel that misery anymore. I felt a kind of a quiet joy. She had that and before I left her she said why don't you bring a picture of your mother to me? I'd like to see it. So the next day I took it and she looked at it and she said, oh, but she's an old friend of mine. And you know that kept me happy for a long time because I was very close with my family and separated them when I was very young. No? That I remember. And you, Gary, would you have a personal memory God, to so share with us? So yeah. many, I don't yeah. remember. The one which really springs out of you to show what kind of woman mother was. So many. She yes. was a lovely lady. So many kind. Because she was here as a little girl. So, and she was with mother a lot, you see. When I was a baby, there was no school in the ashram. So I used to go up to her and um, she used to give me little flowers in my hand, three little flowers and then two. And she said, now how many flowers? She started teaching me mathematics like that, mm. you know. And then take out a flower and then say, now how many do you have? Things like that, right from... You tell her bottom. how you grow mother, what, how you used to change your name. I used to change my name she, all she the time. She was given the name, but she was just baptized. And she was given the name of Judy Ann. And I used to love Indian names, so I used to make up, every day I had a different name. So one day I went and told mother, you give me a name. So she said, if I give you a name, you won't change it. <laughs> I said, no, I won't change it. So then one day, when I went up, she said, your name is Gauri. And that means the fair one, but not fair here, She's fair here. And she said it, I was I think four or five. But I feel as though I can still hear it. She said it with so much concentration and something specially she put through to me that it's still vivid as though she told me just yesterday. Mona, what do you think, because you're a Westerner and you were brought up in England, do you feel you, you, you were closer to mother because of that? I don't think so because, you see, she was universal. She, uh, sometimes I or even thought that she knew English much better than I did. And I think it may be like that with most people. 
that she had that with. She could identify herself with others so easily. Sometimes, she was so wide. Sometimes we have heard stories of Indians going up and telling her something very intensely in their own language, which she didn't know. But she used to understand, she used to feel what they said. She didn't even know the language, but she could feel what they said and uh, she sort of helped them in that way. So, we never thought of her as a European. Or an Indian or, or anything. anything. She was just, as everybody called her, Sweet Mother, mother Dusmer. So, we always thought of her either a mother or Dusmer. She was the mother. There was she no was. nationality attached to it. She belonged to everybody in the whole world. That's how we thought. So, do you, how would you explain? I'm saying it's Gori. The AU should like be pronounced French. in French. Gori. Many people don't call her Gori, you know. They have Gori, Gori. What do you call her, Laurie? I call her Gori. Yes. Not quite Gori. Actually, we spoke a lot of French with Mother. In that way, she always spoke to us in French, so that uh, we children, so that she encouraged us to speak French. And after that, we didn't speak French anymore. That was something. So, Mona, tell us the first time you, you saw Mother. Could you tell us about uh, that first moment? And you don't remember. I do remember, but I'm not going to tell. <laughs> Why? Because you know what's important when people explain the first time they they so mother is very telling. He's, he's Come on. Good, but Come he would he would like to say perhaps because you saw mother and Swindo together. No, no, no. We saw, we mother. saw mother first. Sri Aurobindo we saw at Darshan time. Oh. That was in August. In those days there was no Darshan in April. Nice. We saw mother in February soon after we were married. So, can you just tell us a little bit? What you, could you tell us what you felt when you first saw Mother? Well, it's not for that machine. No, it's for it, us. Uh, oh, uh, sure, only for you. Yes. She's putting it aside. Well, you see, I was educated in a convent and I was used to the Reverend Mother of the convent. So when our friend, Amal Sethna, arranged for us to go and see Mother, I thought I was going to see a Reverend Mother, instead of which I saw a lady with a beautiful sari and uh, painted toenails, painted fingernails, so I was rather shocked, because my expectations were all ready-made, you see. I thought it was a Reverend Mother, the head of a kind of a convent. We weren't living in the ashram then, we were out in our own house. But with, with Udar it was quite different. Ask him how he felt when he saw Mother. Udar, what did you feel when you first saw Mother? I told you my first sight of Sir Vindo, I saw him first. Yeah, but when you saw Mother I told first. You. Yes. Then I looked at Mother and I saw her love. That's the first thing I saw, Mother, so much of love. That's what I saw. And then other things came later, but the first thing I saw was love. So I went to her, put my head in her lap, and she caressed my head. Then I went to see her window, and he did. This is the first, my first impression of Mother was somebody with, love, with a lot of love, that's all. And um, did you recognize at that time that she was uh, uh, divine? Mona, what do you think? I've never recognized that because I know nothing about the divine. I'm quite ignorant of the Divine, so I couldn't recognize that. So what did you recognize in Mother? I thought she was a lovely lady, very gracious and so knowledgeable and uh, well, she was nice to know. Can you give, why was she nice to know? In what, uh... Because she was a lovely lady! <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm English. Gauri and Udara are Indian. So it's quite different for them, do you understand? Can you tell us more about No, that? I can't. The yes. English, I think the English are usually not a very spiritual or except for exceptions. They're more matter of fact as a people. 
mother told my mother that she is doing more yoga than many people, but my mother says she isn't. Who so said she, that? Mother said. She did. She did. She does it in her own way, but she thinks she doesn't. My mother's got very fixed views, you know, she knows how to tidy cupboards and organize things, but she thinks that she's not doing yoga. But mother said, she told mother, I don't know how to do meditation. Mother said, yes. doesn't matter, I'll do your meditation yes, for yes, you. Yes, yes. I'll meditate for you, you don't have to bother about yes. meditating. Mother was full of love, you know, that, that really she represented love and she gave us love in every way. That was the way. And Gauri, what's the difference between uh, your mother, Mona, and mother? Would it be possible for you to... <laughs> Everything. Yes, my mother is uh, my human mother and I don't find Dusma my human mother. She is mother of my mother also. <laughs> she is everybody's mother, she is something, she is much, she is not human, she is more than human, I would say. Oh yes, she's much more than human. If you know, I told you to read that little book, The Mother. That would have given you all what I'm telling you. <laughs> But you, you And know. it's written so beautifully. So can, can you give can you give us a hint now? What is in this book, which what, describes what mother? is what is about mother in the book? Everything, five aspects, the four aspects, four and, the, aspects of and then the fifth aspect of love. Oh, that I don't know. Not in the book. It's in the book. Yes, but it's not written like that, Gauri. It comes to that. May come to that, but it's not written like it that. You know, I read the words. What's behind them, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you didn't put all that in. <laughs> no, she'll cut it out. Oh. Donc c'était du silence euh, par rapport à ce qui vient de se passer à l'image avec... Euh, voilà, ok, merci. So, um, can, can, can we tell you, it's when you first came back to England, what was your feeling because you had been away from so many years and you, Gary, you discovered uh, England? Oh, I loved it. I loved it because I met my sisters, no? 31 years. After 31 years, I loved it. 31 years ago? You see, I didn't go to London because my family had moved away. I just, we passed through there, didn't we? Yes. We, mm -hmm. East London, near the docks. Mm -hmm. And my mother had gone and um, many relations had gone. Mm -hmm. So I went. And you, Gary? It was the first time you were discovering I, your. Yes, first time I went out practically. Mother was very happy for me. She said, It's very good for you. Ça va élargir votre conscience. She said, It's good for you. We've been living in, you know, protected here in our cocoon. And she was very happy for me to go out and see. And it was a very beautiful experience. We went to Rome, we went to Switzerland, a few, two days everywhere. In those days, wherever the aeroplane stopped, we could spend four days. So we saw a lot. It was lovely in those days. It was in 68. Ah, ça. No, 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 we didn't didn't move the box. I told you to move it, Mom. So, I told you to take it down to Okay. Okay. 
So Gary, tell us about um, how mother taught you um, to like flowers. And where are your flowers here? Can you show us? I haven't got many flowers just now because we've had a very bad winter and most of the flowers died in the winter. And before that we had the monsoon. We had a very heavy monsoon too. So we haven't got many flowers. There are a few orchids here and the flowers are ending there. This tree has completely, it's a lovely cork tree with beautiful white flowers. But it's all bare now. And there are some orchids there if you like. There are a few. That's a big tree. Yes. I don't know, mother didn't teach us. We just lived among flowers. She gave us messages through flowers. Every day we'd, we'd, we would go to her and in our hand she'd choose this flower or that flower and that flower and we'd see the meaning and we'd understand what we needed for our own progress, what we had to become aware of. So it was a language of flowers between her and us. And uh, did you receive flowers at other occasions like at um, birthdays? Birthdays. Can, can you tell me when you received flowers from mother? mother Our was birthdays were very special days for us. It was an occult day and we used to go to mother about five times. In the morning we'd get a plate of flowers, then we'd get a bouquet of flowers, we'd get roses. We'd, she'd make a very special fuss of us on that day. And uh, we'd be full of flowers, flowers, flowers. And we'd see her before she went for tennis, after she came back for tennis. And she'd see us specially because it was our birthday and we'd be very special that day. Or if she was passing in the car, sometimes she'd wave in the street. And uh, it was very intimate and very, very special, a birthday was. Uh, it's interesting for us to understand how mother uh, introduced Western customs in the ashram. So could you tell us uh, whether she introduced Western, Western customs? Uh, and maybe use the example of Christmas and tell us a little bit about Christmas. Oh, she told us in our class that we, we celebrated Christmas as the festival of light. She said long before the birth of Christ, this was a very famous festival of light, when the light came back on earth. Yes. And for that, it was celebrated long, long ago. And we celebrated it for that very reason, as a festival of light. So how was it, Monan? Was it similar to Christmas? in England? Can no, you tell us? No. Uh, Christmas in England is an absolute family affair. Here we were lots and lots of little children it started with. You had those photos. Yes. yes. All the school children. Yes. All our school children. We used to play games, get presents from mother. We had a donkey Lottery. there. Our donkey. We had a pet donkey too. It was a party. It started with Gauri when she was a little when she was a baby of one and two or three ashram people used to come and that's how it started and when we joined the uh, ashram we had one party here and Pranob came and Pranob liked it and I think he told mother then it went for everybody afterwards it was not only the children all the ashramites came so could you just say the word Christmas and maybe say um... mother never called it Christmas she called it Noel. Noel, and she gave beautiful messages. Every Noel, we had a lovely message of light. And uh, did you have, for example, what did you have? Did you have the uh, and uh... We had cakes. She said Christmas without cakes. You have to With have cake. chocolate. Chocolate cakes. Always chocolate on top and a nice fruity cake without eggs because many ashramites don't eat eggs. So it was made with sweet potato. Very special recipe. And even all these students now, we've been the school has been open for more than 50 years, but the memory of a Christmas cake in the ashram is something special. <laughs> and did you have uh, Christmas trees? Yes. Did you say? Yes. We had Christmas trees, right. yes. We had a lottery. We had lottery, we had Christmas trees, we used to decorate it. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Silence. Silence.